had a similar problem in 85 there. And you know, Mike, we've got three exciting classes today, and each class has got their own special characteristics. Steve, the champs that are going to be running first have a lot of new boats running this year with enclosed cells for driver safety. Rourke Summerford, designer and builder of the famous STV hull, using the Mod VP class, has now built a hull for the champ class. This, on top of the current Seabold, Burgess, Fresnel, and Lee Craft hulls, offers the driver a variety of hulls to fit his personal driving style. And Mike, as we watch the races today, we'll be able to compare those different hulls. Well, a driver who wasn't here a year ago because of injuries, but is making big noise today, is our points leader. He's qualified second, here's Chris Bush. Chris Bush, the points leader in the IOGP Tour, qualified second at 108.8. And Chris, you've got to be pleased. It's your best effort of the year qualifying second today. I think we did well in qualifying. We ran the uh, setup in qualifying that we're going to run in the race, so we didn't run some fluky off-the-wall deal. And uh, we ran it quite conservative, so we're, we're pleased with that and hope, uh, hope we do that well in the race. Well, a year ago, it was a fairy tale victory. A 1-2 finish for the Bud Light team as 27-year-old Mike Siebold finished two seconds ahead of his father, Bill. We'll see if he can do it this afternoon. A large crowd on hand. We're about set to go racing here in St. Louis. We'll have it for you right after this. Welcome back to the Bud Light World Championship Grand Prix. And what makes this racing here in St. Louis so exciting is because the drivers, a whole host of Europeans, are here today, and they're racing not only for IOGP points, but also Fonda points. And we had a chance to talk to Michael Werner of West Germany. Strategy coming off the dock. What do you want to do today? I only know, to, for me, the race starts after behind the first turn boy, which means it's very dangerous from the start pontum to the first turn boy. This is it's the hard things which I must very carefully and from there I push the hard I can absolutely well Michael will give you a chance to get dressed here he's got to go to work and Michael Werner is going to try to get back into the championship point lead here at St. Louis he's going to have to do well today and we'll see how he does well while Michael is having a hard time starting from the middle of the field Jonathan Jones the world champion is starting in third Interesting track here at St. Louis the course is laid out at short straightaways but uh, the finesse comes in the corner uh, it must be a little bit different than what you're used to. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's a full turn by circuit. Uh, certainly different to the up and down circuit that we're, we're normally used to. Uh, it is definitely a driver circuit. And uh, we've got like 20 odd boats starting here this weekend. So there's going to be a lot of traffic out there. A field of 22 drivers ready to go here in St. Louis. Bill Siebold on the pole with 111.5 miles an hour. Chris Bush, who is the points leader in second. John Jones, the reigning world champion third. Steve D'Souza in fourth. Randy Gore had his best qualifying time, qualifying fifth. Buck Thornton, winner in Augusta, sixth. Jim McKay, qualifying seventh. And Chuck McKay, back again after retirement in eighth. Well, Mark Wilson, who finished here fifth a year ago. Jimmy Johnson, who finished fourth. Gene Thibodeau, the Formula One uh, world champion of a year ago. And Mike Siebold, who qualified on the pole here last year, is starting in 12th position. Moving on down the line, Michael Werner qualified 13th. John Hill from England. Uh, in the 14th spot, Dennis Colpado, he built his own boat this year in 15th, and Art Kennedy in 16th. And Craig Wendt, who is a rookie, Julio Corbetta coming back, uh, raced here last year, the Brazilian. Bruce Washburn out of Kentucky, and another rookie, Scott Gilman out of California, challenging St. Louis for the first time. Rounding out the field, we've got Italian Guido Capolini in 21st, and 22nd is Mike Zamparelli. Well, Mike, some of the drivers here in St. Louis feel like it's an unfair advantage for the Seabulls here. They test their boats, and we had a chance to talk to the man on the pole, Bill Seabull. Bill, you've reached the pole position, 111.5 uh, miles an hour, three miles an hour quicker than anybody else. Tell us your secrets yesterday. Well, you know, we went with the big wheel, and I think the, uh, we had a good, strong engine, and uh, uh, it felt real good yesterday morning, and we just didn't do a lot to it and didn't put a lot of time on it. Uh, we know this course, it, it's a, it seems like a small wheel course, but if you know how to get around some of the turns, it can, you can run a big wheel. Well, Mike, we should be able to explain to the fans what a big wheel is. Oh, what Bill is referring to there is a larger pitch propeller. Uh, some of the boats uh, will be able to handle that larger pitch propeller, like you said, if they can get around the course properly. Well, the crowd cheering their favorite son, Bill Siebel, looking for his sixth victory here in the 16-year history of this race in St. Louis. And as the one-minute gun goes off, 22 boats were scheduled to start on the dock. However, 21 were on the dock, and there was one problem in the pit. Dan Marcellus of Mercury. Dan, tell me exactly what the problem is with Chuck McKay's boat right now. Well, right now it appears that it's either an EFI box or perhaps uh, a wire that is shorted out in the ignition system. So we're trying to do a quick 
diagnosis. We're trying to put another EFI box on quick, and we'll see if it lights. It's a good chance we can get it solved. All eyes are glued on the official starter, Bob Schubert, as he has the white flag in the air. We're less than 20 seconds to go. And the tension mounts, and the flag is waved, and we're underway. And it's Chris Bush who gets a perfect start off the dock. Bill Siebel having problems. Thibodeau on the outside in the red boat, making progress from eighth position as we watch 22 boats head off into the first turn pin as they go directly across the course. It's Chris Bush, probably the most daring and talented young driver in the world today. He's charged to the front. He's holding off the Bud Light boat of veteran Bill Siebel, the world's most decorated driver with over 50 world titles, including the 1982 World Championship. Who's right behind and he's looking for a way to pass on the outside it's Siebold who led here in 85 and again here in 86 and he failed to win either race is trying to strike up the lead once again here in 87 on lap number two Bush is showing more finesse through the corners but it's Siebold with more top end on the straightaway he's pulling alongside and he's challenging for the lead well that higher pitch propeller paid off it looks like here Steve he's able to pull Chris to the straightaways and just the way he's going around that turn I think he's got it handled with that higher pitch propeller. Siebold, who won the last race on the tour in Minneapolis, is starting to pull away as we watch the boats go through turn number one. There's Siebold now on the very dangerous backstretch. Look at him go as he's pulled out a 10-boat length lead on Chris Bush, the youngster out of St. Paul, Minnesota. Siebold through turn number three. Here's Chris Bush coming through a little bit wider. And back into third place is Gene Thibodeau, who started all the way back in eighth. So right now, it's the band from St. Louis, Bill Siebold, in a commanding position, but we've got a long way to go. We'll be back with more right after this. Traffic. Chris Bush, who's in second place, had a look to his right, and he saw Guido Campolini and the Stefan boat get by, and he had to make a decision, and he watched him very closely because the drivers can run into trouble if they're not watching back markers. Well, there's Chuck McKay after eight laps. Mikey's finally getting into the race. Why would a driver uh, start in the race and he's eight, nine laps down? Why even bother? For the points. Every driver is going for points at each event. And you never know, somebody else could have a problem to drop out. He could still end up uh, in a higher position. Well, speaking of higher positions, there's the man in first place, Bill Siebold, working his way through traffic. 22 boats started the race this afternoon. And the difference in qualifying between those boats was 21 miles an hour. And here, Bill Siebold on the backstretch is trying to pass the boat number 50, the red one. Craig Wendt, one of the many rookies in the race this afternoon, who is driving the old Quaker Paints Mercury-powered 87 Seabold hull. And there you see Chris Bush, who's in second place. And Mike, that's a graphic example of the pickup of these boats as he goes from the turning buoy down the back straightaway. That's where setup is so important. You don't normally run the same setup qualifying as you do in the race. When the water gets chopped up, you want to make sure you compensate with propellers, engine heights, weight distribution. It's all important to the running of the boat. Well, a man who's made great compensations this afternoon is Bill Siebold, who's out in the lead. He's now past Craig Wynn, and he's chasing after Scott Gilman, another rookie, who is on a large learning curve today here. He's about ready to be lapped by Bill Siebold. There's the man in third place, Gene Thibodeau, a wealth of experience. He's had a couple of great starts this year on the races, but he's had hard luck this year, Mike. Well, he's running for a new team this year, and he's the 86th World Formula One champion, and it's hard to come back after a successful year like that with a new team. He'll get the bugs worked out. He'll be there. Well, there's Chris Bush in second place. He's 12 seconds back on the leader at this point. This, he has said, is his favorite course. He's been coming here since he was a kid, and he's won three Mod VP World Championships in his day. He said yesterday he set the course up a conservative way for the qualifying, but today he is uh, really trying to do his best, but he's having a real problem figuring out how he can get up to uh, Bill Siebold, who Billy seems to be holding him off at bay. Well, I think Billy picked the right setup. Like we talked about earlier, propellers, engine heights. Chris, uh, he's running well, but I think Billy's just got a little too much top end for him to catch up. And as we talked about before, this circuit is different here, Mike. And Chris really likes it. It's four pins, but they're spread out more. And a little bit different than what the uh, normal IOGB courses are, which are really long and narrow. Yes, and this course is commonly referred to as a driver's course. The drivers love it. They look forward to this event every year. Everybody sets up a little different for this race. Well, our leader, Bill Siebold in first, Chris Bush in second, third is Gene Thibodeau, fourth is John Jones, and fifth right now is Steve D'Souza. As we come back, we see the dicing going on for third place here. 
Jonathan Jones on the outside, the current Fonda World Champion, but it's Thibodeau on the inside, making him fight for every inch of the way as they battle for third. And earlier this season, we had a chance to talk with Gene Thibodeau, a man who has more time in safety capsules than any other driver that is out on this course today here in St. Louis. You know, you take a look at uh, the chance now that you have to run in a tunnel boat here in the uh, IOGP Tour. Uh, this is really the same type of haul you ran in Formula One, though, a Fresnel Flyer that you raced last year. Uh, but the boat's a little shorter. Have you noticed any differences in the uh, controlling of the boat other than the weight in the back so far this year? Well, the boat actually drives better because you don't have the, the heavy outboard motor hanging off the back of it. It's a lot looser running boat, and I really enjoy running this style of boat because it's, it's real clean off the water and feels a lot uh, spunkier out of the corners. I really like it. You know, Gene's a true competitor. He's been around for 17 years. He started in the smaller classes, worked his way up to the big champ class, was a winner in 83. A very experienced driver with a lot of cockpit time. And one of his lesser known records is the bass boat record, he said, going 110 miles an hour in a bass boat record. That was a world record one time. Trolling for bass at 110 miles an hour is just a little too fast for me. Well, Thibodeau has had a problem here battling for fourth place with Steve D'Souza. Steve hit him on the left sponsor, and you can see Mikey had problems. He is not going to make it to the shoreline. That boat is going to sink. Oh, definitely. You can see the whole left side of the boat's gone. He's going down quick. And the bad luck continues for Thibodeau. We've got more racing from St. Louis when we return right after this. Lots of... 